east or west, home is the best. John chapter 4, verse 21. I wish the choir was standing here with me and repeat that song again. I, I really felt very blessed, choir. Thank you so much. For, uh, actually, even the minutes that we have spent, you preached the sermon, so I'll just finish what you have started. Verse 21, I want us to read together. Uh, John 4, 21 to 26. Jesus said to her, Woman, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You, are, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and now it's here. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for the privilege of hearing your word again. We pray that you may minister to each and every one of us through this word and through the topic of worship for the glory and honor of your name. I commit myself to you as a vessel that you can use at this hour to dispense that which you have for your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Uh, because of the time, I won't go to so many things concerning the background and the introduction so that I can just bring to us the point, and then I believe God is going to bless you. Gio, I realized that worship is not in a song. It is not even in the preaching that I am doing this morning. Even that seat that Gio talked about, when you sit on it properly and take care of it, you know that is worship. <laughs> and the Father is looking for worshipers who can worship in spirit and in truth. And one of the ways is to take care and become a steward of what God has given unto us. Um, parents, if you have your children, just like I am not repeating the words of my bishop, but he allowed me to... To, to still emphasize on that. Please, if you have a child, there is a wonderful facility on the other side. And nobody will tell you, don't allow your child to drink. The, the, the small ones will be given a place to drink. But if you must come with them in church, talk to the usher. Our ushers are there, and we have asked them to be standing or be available just next to you. Ask them where you can sit, and feed your baby, and that is worship. Amen? Amen? We love you so much that we have to care even to have you sit on a proper seat, and that will be a good thing to do. Looking at John 4, I followed the conversation that Jesus had with the woman of Samaria. I know that you have either heard or read this text and it has always been a blessing. It's been used by evangelists many times. And today we are going to look at it from the, from the worship point of view. And like I said, I was so blessed from morning, the worship, the choirs, they have just been preaching the message that God has given to us. And for sure, it is a confirmation that God wanted us to talk about worship this morning. I give glory to him. And so... Um, looking at the story, there was this woman of Samaria, and then there is Jesus who has come to rest, as it were. He was very tired, but I know his rest and his meat is to bring salvation to the world that is lost. And so he's moving from Judea, and he's going to, to, to Galilee, and he has to pass through Sychar, you know, and for one reason that for sure we know, it was because of a divine appointment with this particular woman. So there was an element of prejudice for both the Jews, I mean, because they thought 
or they were for real, worshipping what they know. <laughs> and then for the Samaritan, you know, each one of them was proud of what they do. The Jew felt we worship what we know. The Samaritan, on the other side, Jesus says, they worship what they don't know because salvation is for Jews. But Jesus is coming on board to propose not Jewish worship, nor even Samaritan worship. He is not even comparing the two to say which one is greater than the other one. He is coming to bring the aspect of true worship to the, to the woman of Samaria. He is introducing to the woman the right worship that needs to be done. The worship that the father is looking for. You know, when you read the scripture and you hear the Bible telling us that the father is seeking, that means that he's having a problem. When he looks at worship in Samaria and looks at worship in, uh, in, uh, in Jerusalem, he's having a problem and he's still seeking for true worshipers. He's introducing worship as a lifestyle that comes from knowing the Father and actually giving him worship, giving him glory in the Spirit. And there's no way out you can say that I am worshiping in spirit and in truth if you do not know the truth. And where do we find the truth? In the word of God. Amen. And we need the spirit to understand the word of God because the word is spirit. And you can only understand it from the spirit point of view. Let me tell you, intellect alone can never give a revelation of or even understanding or even illumination of what the word of God is talking about. But when you engage the spirit, again, who was involved in writing of scripture, he gives you the understanding of what, God, what God's intention was as he put that word down. So the Jews worshipped in their own way. They would go to Jerusalem and bow down and sacrifice and, and read scriptures you know, in the congregation. And that for them was worship. In Samaria, probably it was done in a different way. Worship has been a theme from Genesis to Revelation. Worship is what we have been created for. When you come to the book of Acts, you find the early church gathering somewhere, praising God and breaking bread and learning at the apostles' feet. That was worship for them. And when you come to other, other levels of worship, eras of worship and all that, you can see worship growing. And therefore, worship is not in one way. Worship is diverse. Do we agree? So when we are worshiping in the same way, then it gives me a question in my mind whether we are growing with worship or whether we are stuck in one way. True worship comes from the heart. By the way, it doesn't come from the mountain. It doesn't come from the temple. It comes from the heart. And that is what makes worship a lifestyle. Because you don't have to come to church here to worship the Lord. You can worship the Lord in the market. You can worship the Lord in your home. You can worship the Lord at work. Because worship is part and parcel of your life. Worship is not done to somebody who is equal to you. You worship somebody who is higher than yourself. And actually, unless worship is vertical, then there is no worship. There is no horizontal worship because it has to be higher authority. So Jesus comes to the Samaritan. And he has to deal with fast things fast. He tells the woman, give me a drink. He was just breaking, you know, uh, getting into a conversation with her, breaking barriers and trying to have a conversation with her. So he asks for water. And this woman looks at him and says, you are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. How come? You, being a Jew, can ask for water from me, being a Samaritan. And that one started a conversation. But this conversation was developing from one point to another. 
And Jesus tells the woman, go and bring your husband. I just want to get to the point. I cannot say everything now. But he tells the woman, go and bring your husband. And as far as the woman was concerned, she had how many? Five? And the one that she was having, the sixth one, was not her husband. So she's worried, which one would you want me to bring in her mind, probably? And she, she says, I have no husband. She was sure. Do you know you can be living with somebody and they are not your husband? Did you know that? And it is not an, a, an accident. The woman knew <laughs> that I am living with so and so and she, he is not my husband. By the way, in worship, truthfulness is required. So you need to investigate yourself. Who are you living with? Is he your husband or your wife? That is the one God is asking. Go and bring him. Because we must kill some things before we can worship God. I think that's why in the earlier times, sacrifice was needed in the place of worship. And you do not, I know I have heard, I have preached myself and said that we are living in the time of grace where we do not have to kill an animal. Let me tell you, we kill ourselves every day. We come to worship. And the altar must be dirty with blood that is stained with sin so that the Father can have access to our hearts. We cannot worship the Lord until we kill some things in our lives. So Jesus says first things first. Before I even tell you what the father is seeking, you must bring your husband. And the woman says, no, I, I do not have one. And then after the conversation, the woman realizes that my new catch, number seven, is not an ordinary man. You know, seven is a number of completion. And maybe she knew that she was a worshiper. But she needed to raise her worship to true worship. She has been worshiping in Mount Gerizim, in Samaria, but she was not worshiping properly. And that's why Jesus is seeking for her heart so that he can introduce her to true worship. Church, did you know that you could be worshiping God in that mountain that you think you know how to worship? And let me tell you, when you're worshiping the wrong thing, and when you're worshiping in the wrong altar, do you know the wrong altar will never tell you that you are wrong? I wish I had a witness in the house. If you have not come to the place of truthfulness, if you're not worshiping God in truthfulness, you will never know that your worship is wrong. This woman kept on going to the mountain of Gerizim and, and maybe killing some animals there. The altar never spoke to her. We need to come to the right altar that speaks and tells us that what you have been doing for many years is not the right thing. When she met the first man, the first man never told her that your worship is wrong. The second, the third, the sixth. Until you come to the right man, church. Then he will look at you straight in the eye and tell you, no, what you have been doing is the wrong thing. You must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I will hate to really get tired. Worshiping the Lord, and tell you, I tell you, worship is not easy. You think kneeling down is easy? And lifting your hands when you're feeling tired. Many times we come to church tired. He renews our strength. Thank God for the psalm. He's God who renews our strength. And then all these things that we have been doing. You are told you have not even done anything. The father is still seeking. You have been raising your hand but the father is still seeking. You have been kneeling down but the father is still seeking. You have been bringing a huge offering, but the Father is still seeking for worshippers. Who can, he doesn't see you. This reminds me of some giving that was going on in church. 
And Jesus said, I don't know why that day Jesus sat to observe the giving of the people. And he watched the one who was carrying a million. They passed. They dropped. Of course, you have to pay attention to the million giver. Jesus didn't see him. Another one came carrying half a million. He never saw her. Then a woman came. You know, slowly, because she was coming to worship. Please touch, you must separate. Show off and worship. Those are two different things. Jesus saw the heart of this woman from behind. And she came carrying her two cents. I don't know what a mite is. Uh, you know, two mites. You know, scripture has a language. And so she comes carrying them. She's even ashamed of herself. But she, her heart is standing before the Lord. Do you know you can be standing, but when the Lord looks at you, you are down, down, down. And you can be down, and when the Lord looks at you, you are up, up, up. The woman came and dropped the offering, and Jesus called the church to attention and said, this woman has given more than everyone else. And I'm sure the millionaire was looking and thinking that Jesus has miscalculated. Let me tell you, worship is different. Worship is not physical. Worship is spiritual. Worship is from the depths of the heart. Worship is not what we think. Worship is not the titles that we are carrying. Worship is not the number of degrees that you have. Worship is humility. Coming to the Lord and knowing that you are coming to the great I am. I love that song that was sung. You know, God is one and he's the one to be worshipped. And so this woman is told, you must bring your husband. And she seizes the moment. She gets it. The problem that we have with the church today is that we don't get it. The father is seeking, the son is speaking, the spirit is convicting, but we still don't get it. Why? Because our hearts are standing. And we think that we must be addressed according to what we have. The Lord will not address you. Thank you for filling the church. I am telling you the truth. I realized these truths and I cried before the Lord to have mercy on me because it would be wrong for me to always come to church. And for us, we come for the three services and today we have a fourth one with the board. You know, when, when we have another meeting after the three services, it's another service for us. It's a fourth service. Today we have four services. And you can imagine from morning you have been here and then the father looks at you and he doesn't see you. He's still waiting for somebody to come to church. It is wrong. So Jesus, after the woman realizes that what I have been doing in Mount Gerizim is wrong, she decided to go after getting the truth. She decided to run to her village and to call everybody. She said, come and see a man that has told me everything that I ever did. But do you know what Jesus had told her? That you have no husband. Was that everything? No. He didn't even tell her where she was coming from or anything. But she felt that because you have touched the nerve itself, it is as good as touching every part of me. Do you know there is a place the Lord touches you and you just feel that that is where the problem has been coming from. There are men and women in this service who need a touch. For them to realize that God has told them everything. God has done everything for you. She said that he has told me everything that I ever did. No, he didn't. He told her, go and bring your husband. You have done well to say that you have no husband. Because even the one that is in the house right now is not your husband. But that was the wound that was eating this woman up. And then when she gets the point, I pray that you get the point today. 
Jesus now begins to teach her in verse number 21. He says, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. We are not here to talk about where we go for worship, where, you know, all those things. They are important, but they are not necessary when it comes to true worship. Jesus says that you people worship what you have no idea about. But as the Jews, we worship what we know. But this does not matter at all. What matters is true worship because that is what the Father is seeking for. And I was asking myself, what are the things that hinder the church from accessing true worship? I discovered that it is self, one of them. I said it is the mother of them all. Self is the one that hinders worship. Because you look at yourself, me, myself, and I, the false trinity. Me, myself, and I. And you, you, you know, you want people to address you according to where you work, what you have, and who you are, the social standing in the community. I am telling you, the Father is seeking. <laughs> the Father is seeking. When you want to be addressed based on how you dress, the Father is still seeking. Ajapata. He's still seeking. If you want to be addressed according to the amount of tithe that you pay to church, the father is still seeking. Because he's looking for true worshippers. Self will want attention. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know where I work? Don't you know how much money I have? That is the false Trinity. It cannot worship God. It is something that needs to be brought to the altar and killed. Poor foundation on the issue of worship. Growing up, we were taught that you cannot clap your hands. Thank God that nowadays there is liberty in some of our churches where we came from. When we are doing our membership classes, we hear people from this denomination, others from this denomination, and they tell us how they used to worship. I tell you, God has delivered us. And God has delivered the church. You were supposed to stand like a tree and worship while standing, pray when standing. There was no room for the Holy Spirit. If you dare speak in a small tongue, you are chased out of church. And therefore, those poor foundations Cost us not to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. When you come to worship and you do not have the word, the truth, then it is a hindrance. I was telling the first church, we copy. You hear somebody preaching in a certain way. Let me use myself. Preaching in a certain way and you practice the whole night so that you pronounce it the way they pronounced it. Because you have not gone to the closet to hear God. So you keep on copying. You keep on going to, to YouTube to get a message, a someone from there. So that when you stand and say, there's one of the guys who told me when we were in Bible school, you do not need to labor. I wondered what that guy was doing in the Bible school. He told me you do not have to labor looking for scripture. And someone, I will give you a site where you can download a sermon. And when you preach, even the English you speak, what what I go in I am not looking for that. I am not looking for that. When you lack the word of God, you download a sermon. When you lack the word of God. You copy a song. And I'm not saying that when you sing somebody else's song is wrong. It is okay. We teach one another. But don't dwell there for too long. If you're singing a song, let him put a new song in, in your heart. 
By the way, what, what happened to, to those people who compose songs? Must we sing all the time? Same things. We can ask the father. We can go to the closet. By the way, the bridegroom is still in the chamber and is waiting for the bride to get to the chamber so that he can reveal the things of heaven to her. Unless you go to the chamber, you will remain the same and the father will continue seeking. It is the time to go to the chamber with the bridegroom and get an understanding of where God is leading the church. God has not called us to belong to denominations. He has called us to belong to him. By the way, God is calling us to sonship, not to churchship. All I'm saying, all I'm saying that even as you come to GCI Central, belong to the church of Jesus Christ. Belong to the kingdom of God. There's no value of you sitting here and going home as sinner. Belong to the kingdom because he's calling you to sonship. And that is true worship. The father is looking for those ones. He's not looking for women to go to Mount Gerizim. He's not looking for men to go to Jerusalem. He's calling for people to drop their six husbands and come to the king of glory. Come to the man who has conquered the world. Come to the man who gives everlasting life. Come to the man who changes the lives of men. That is the place where Jesus is asking you to come. And fear is another obstacle. Fear. Because you, you, you are afraid. You're so conscious about who is standing next to you. We are so conscious about the things that we are going to say. I am telling you, if you have spent time in the chamber, there is no wrong worship in church. We don't come to church to worship. We have been worshippers in our place of work. We've been worshippers in our homes. We are coming to church to unite in faith and in unison to give God the glory. But we were worshippers even as we came. For you who waits for the team to give you a good worship team, the Father is looking. Aja kupata bado. Fear. You don't want to kneel down because people are going to see you. You don't want to cry because people will think you sinned last night. I am telling you the truth. If I must cry, I will cry. Because actually at that time, we are supposed to be worshipping, not thinking. So the sinner is the thinker who is thinking I sinned. I am the worshipper who is crying. And therefore, don't be conscious about anybody around you. If you need to kneel down, don't worry about your suit that goes to the, to the laundry. If he provided the suit, he will provide for the laundry. Kwani does he provide halfway? If he gave you the feet, he gave you the knees. He demands knee worship. Go down and worship. On your knees. He demands feet worship. Stand on your feet and worship. The church needs to be transformed. And that is what they sang. The renewing even of our minds. In how we worship him. In how we worship him. Because the father is looking for those worshippers. Who can be renewed in their minds. And not conforming to the patterns. Have you ever heard worship in Kenya, particularly in Nairobi, and you think you are in Ni 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 Nigeria? Thank you for the Nigerians who are in the house. They are my friends. I love you. But we do not have to copy you. We know that you are true worshipers and all that. But you know I can come to church and worship in Kamba, and we are going to be doing a lot of that on Friday. And that worship will go to the Lord. I do not have to dance like you to become a worshiper or even to pull heavens down. I just need to dance like a camber and heaven will be here as a witness. Do not 
don't conform. Give God worship. Spend time in the closet as the bride of Christ. And I am telling It will take a person worshipping in Mount Gerizim to copy your dance. They don't know where you got it from. Some of the people that we are copying, their preachings, their songs, their dances, they've been in the closet with the bridegroom. And they came up with that song. And you copycat, me copycat, I'm here trying, working overnight to get a dance. It doesn't get anywhere. The father is looking. Actually seeking. Worship calls for uprightness. Worship in Gerizim and in Jerusalem attracted people who sin the whole night and still come and draw water, feeling very special. We worship on the mountain, and you guys worship in Jerusalem. And Jesus says the Father is seeking. Let me tell you, if you're finding yourself sinning the whole night and feeling nothing and holding the Bible and the mic and telling people, let us lift holy hands to the Lord. The Father is seeking and he's looking for the holy hands. He can't find them in you. We need to change. By the way, this message is for us to rise up. It is not condemnation. It's not judgment. It is for us to rise up in worship and get to the realms of the spirit. Get to the chamber with the bridegroom. Hear what the bridegroom is saying. Do you know there are stories that husband and wife can talk in the sitting room or even in the compound? And there are stories they can talk in the chamber. Jesus is looking for intimacy with the bride. And unless you move from the sitting room to the chamber, you will never know the wonders of heaven. Unless you grow your worship from ordinary songs and ordinary things and ordinary presentations, you will never get to know what the kingdom is full of. I, I, I have to skip everything else and take you to... It's already up. <laughs> Let me just mention this. I know in the third service, God will have mercy on me. God have mercy on me so that I deliver. But I tell you, in chapter number four of Revelation, John is called to the chamber. After writing to the seven churches, he's told, come up here. And when he went, he saw an open door. And God caused him to see a throne. And a man who was seated on the throne. He tried to explain how he looked like with everything that is great in the, in the, in the mind of man. And he said he was like Jasper, like, because he was not exactly that. He tried to imagine what is the most precious metal, what is the most magnificent thing. The bride of Christ seated here, unless you come to the chamber, unless you rise up to the chamber, you will have no idea the God that you're worshipping, how he looks like. He said there was a rainbow around him. Because the only thing he knows that has many colors is the rainbow. He could not precisely describe the Lord. He said around him, around his throne, there were 24 other thrones. Let me tell you, if you have a glimpse of worship in heaven, you will be more serious. He saw 24 other thrones. Elders sitting on each throne, wearing white garments and crowns on their head. And he peeped to see, and they were singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Let me tell you, the voice of worship is holiness. 
It is not these other things that we are copying from left, right, and center. It is holiness. And they sang, worthy is the Lord. In chapter number five, John is welcomed to see. And he saw a man, the man sitting on the throne, holding a scroll. And the angel said, there is nobody who is worthy to open the scroll and even to break the seals. It had seven seals. And you know there was weeping. And then one of the elders came and said, do not weep anymore. The, behold is the Lamb of God. He is worthy to open the scroll and even to break the seals. Let me tell you, church, that Jesus has broken the seals that sealed the word of God from the hand of God. Jesus has come and he has opened the scroll and given it to us. We have the freedom to open the scroll. And even though Jesus has opened the scroll, we have refused to read. Can you imagine worship in heaven? They were crying because nobody was able to open the seals and open the scroll so that they can worship in truth. But Jesus came, the slain lamb of God. When you penetrate worship like that, then the prayers of the saints were presented in heaven. You have to break the ceiling and then you can present the needs to the Father. I do not have time. Let's rise up on our feet and just worship the Lord. And many times it's not about what you feel. It's about what he causes you to feel. Worship does not depend on how your night was. It doesn't depend on what you ate in the morning or what you're wearing. It is about what the Lord has deposited in your heart, what he has spoken to you. If he says drop the six men, you must drop the six men. May you just go before him, I don't know in which manner, and just give him worship. He is worthy. You must know him to worship him properly. Worship is personal. Worship is spiritual. Worship is supernatural. You know, you have to know him. You have to see him as he truly is. He is the savior of the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I pray, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you this wonderful morning. Lord, I pray that for some of us who have had the practice and the deception in us of even keeping men and women and stealing and still coming to worship, Lord, I pray that you minister to us this morning. This word must be followed by the Father to accomplish, for the, to accomplish the purposes for which it was sent. I pray that, Lord, even as we hear your word, we shall not harden our hearts. Amen. 